Okay. Now we're going to talk about the samples. Another big segment of information that we need to know. <coughs> when we talk about, I'll, I'll go back to the PowerPoint slides to get these definitions. Simple random sample. Okay. Simple random sample. It says a sample of n subjects is selected in such a way that every possible sample of the same size n has the same chance of being chosen. Okay. A simple random sample doesn't have anything to do with just an individual, but every group of a certain size. And it has to be such that every group of that size has an equal chance of being chosen. We don't talk about this a lot, um, the simple random sample, and a lot of times we'll just refer to it as a random sample, uh, which is something different. But um, in order for things to be fair, I guess we'll say, uh, we want to have a simple random sample. Okay? And we'll talk more about it in an example. Okay, random sample deals more with just an individual. Okay, members from the population are selected in such a way that each individual member in the population has an equal chance of being selected. All right, so you can see the keys here um, between the you know group of a certain size that would be simple random sample versus individual members. That's just our random sample. And so an example of uh, a process that would lead us to getting a random sample is, <coughs> excuse me, just putting everybody's name in a hat, drawing the names from the hat, that's a random sample. Each individual has the same chance of being selected. Um, another way of doing the simple random sample is using some type of computer software to randomly generate numbers. Okay, which by the way is your other assignment for chapter one, uh, random number generation. Okay, and there's a video in Desire to Learn about that. About a random sample, now we know how to generate a random sample because nobody's going to um, write everybody's name on a piece of paper. We're not doing that in 2013. Systematic sampling. Um, in systematic sampling, we select some starting point. We might use random number to generate the starting point. And then we select every kth element in the population. Okay? Um, and I think we'll look at an interesting example that I had not considered um, that was systematic. But we select some starting point. Could be in a list of numbers. It could be a physical location. And then we select every kth element or sample at every kth interval um, for to get our um, sample. So they have these little Ken dolls, and you see they selected every third one. Okay? Systematic sampling, which is a really good way to sample. It has lots of benefits, um, especially in, let's say, a timed process. Like if you worked in a, a manufacturing setting and let's say you're making breadsticks, okay? Uh, we need to make sure that the machine is on task all day long. So every hour, somebody probably goes out to the line and gets a sample of breadsticks, measures them, and makes sure that they're meeting all of the standards for the breadsticks. Convenient sampling. Just get anybody who's readily available, okay? Usually leads to a lot of bias, but you can get a sample. Okay, for instance, 
<clears throat> if you wanted to know what people felt about lunch offerings here at Midlands Tech and you went over to the cafeteria, um, that's convenient sampling. Lots of people over there eating lunch. Do you think it's a biased sample? Yes. Why? Not everybody's there. Not everybody goes over there or only one place over there. Um, you must like it, right? Okay, yes. So, you know, that convenient sampling easily can have a lot of bias in it. Okay, stratified sampling. Which one is that? What about the cluster sampling? Okay, we're going to talk about that one too. Did I? Okay. Yeah, I think I left one out. I'm sorry. Okay, we want stratified sampling, and then there should also be cluster sampling. Right. Multi-stage, we're going to talk about that a little bit uh, later. Okay. So you might want to split cluster sampling in half if you got the space. Because these two I want you to compare. Okay, stratified versus cluster. Okay, these two get a little tricky, and we want to make sure we're clear on those. Okay, so with the stratified sample, we divide the population into at least two different subgroups that share the same characteristics. Then we draw a sample from each subgroup or stratum. Okay, we take a little bit from each of the groups. Okay, so one thing this does is ensures that we have representation from each subgroup. And it can also allow us to make sure that that representation uh, reflects the population. Okay, for instance, let's say we were interested in, uh, I mentioned at some point this week, uh, the way in which the toilet tissue is placed on the road. Okay, and, you know, we might suspect that there's a big difference between men and women, you know, in this situation. Okay, um, and for whatever reason, I don't know. Let's, uh, how can I make this work? Um, we might want to make sure that we got exactly 50% men and 50% women. So by doing it this way, we can ensure that. Select the same number of men versus the same number of women. Or here's a better example. Let's say um, we want to know about uh, daytime selection of educational TV programming for children. And we're surveying uh, parents who stay at home with their children. Okay? For the most part, we want to survey what? Women, probably still more women stay home. So we might do it such that we have a larger number of women than we do men. Okay. Otherwise, it could kind of um, change the results. And I'm thinking about this new show that's on. What's the name of it? These, uh, it's, it's a show about men who stay at home and take care of their children. And, yeah, I, I, I kinda, it's kind of on. And, you know, they do some weird things still, you know. So, you know, we, we want to have a little representation, but we wouldn't want to have too many of them because they could influence our results overall. Okay, so we make sure, this allows us to make sure that our sample is a lot like the population, like we talked about the other day. Okay, again, the main idea, break it up into some usually naturally occurring groups in our um, population, then we take a little bit from each one. Okay, versus, I lost my pen. The cluster sample. Okay, cluster sampling. Divide the population area into sections or clusters. Then we randomly select some of these clusters, and then we choose all of the members from the selected cluster. Okay, so once we get a, a, a little subgroup, we're going to choose everybody. Okay, and so they have a pretty good example here. Um, naturally occurring subgroups, if we're interested or if we're around an election season um, or we've got a voting issue that's coming up, we might divide by precincts. And then once we randomly select a precinct, every person in that precinct will be surveyed. That's a cluster sample. We're taking the whole cluster once we've selected it. Okay, it may be just one cluster, you know, or multiple clusters. All right. 
So stratified cluster. Those are easily confused, but we're going to talk about it. Okay, and then multi-stage sampling. Um, not a lot you really need to know about this, except that in a practical sense, um, often when we survey or sample data, we use more than one of these things. At one stage, we use this, and then from there, we go. So you might start out with some random selection, and then some cluster sampling or whatever. Collect data by using some combination of the basic sampling methods. That's all you need to know. Okay, very good. All right, so these are our methods of sampling. Um, we've got some examples on our handout. Okay, um, identify which of these types of sampling is used, random, systematic, convenient, stratified, or cluster. Okay, when collecting data from different sample locations in a lake, a researcher uses the line transect method by stretching a rope across the lake and collecting samples at every five meters. What does that sound like? Systematic. That's the one that I thought was really interesting. I never really considered that, you know, it could be a physical point or whatever. Okay, so systematic sampling. Very good. All right, the author collected sample data by randomly selecting 20 different pages from a printed version of the Merriam-Webster Dictionary and then counting the number of defined words on each of those pages. Okay, um, I don't know, I just went to lunch. Let me read it again. Randomly selecting 20 different pages and then counting the number. Okay, so what is it? Cluster. cluster. It's a cluster. Okay, pages obviously could be considered a group in the dictionary. Once we pick the page, we looked at what? Every word on the page. Okay, so cluster sampling. All right. Okay, um, the number of where was I? The author surveyed all of his students to obtain sample data consisting of the number of credit cards students possess. What would we say about that? Sounds like um, convenience. That's what he has readily available would be his students. Okay, so convenience. Okay, in a study of college programs, 820 students are randomly selected from those majoring in communications. Uh, 1,463 from business, 760 are randomly selected from history. What does that sound like? stratified. Okay, we got some groups and we're taking a little bit or a sample from each group. Okay, stratified sampling. Okay, in a Gallup poll, 1,003 adults were called after their telephone numbers were randomly generated by a computer and 20% of them said that they get news on the internet every day. Random, very good. Just a random sample. Okay. All right, determine whether this computer is trying to waste my time. All right, uh, determine whether the sample is a simple random sample. Give a brief explanation of your choice, okay? Um, remind me on Tuesday to come back to this idea 
because I don't know if we really have enough time. Well, you know what? Let's just do it, deal with it. We don't have much time either way. Um, and you can go back and look at this video in Desire to Learn. But I, we're going to look at a little video. this example about the simple random sample it says give a brief explanation of your choice um, determine if this is indeed a simple random sample in order to test for a gender gap in the way that um, I think that should say men and women purchase cars the grant survey poll or the grant survey company polls exactly 750 adult men and 750 adult women randomly selected from adults in the United States. Okay. Is this a simple random sample? Yes or no? Okay. The question is, does every group of 1,500 adults have an equal chance of being selected? No. Okay. In this example, we'll never select a group that contains 1,500 women, right? Because they did what? 750 men, 750 women. Okay, so certainly there are groups, all kinds of groups. You can't get a group that has 700 men and 800 women, not the way they're selecting. Does that make sense? Yes, no, maybe. Okay, <clears throat> so it's not a simple random sample. Okay, not every group of 1,500 has an equal chance of being selected. Okay, according to the State of New York Unified Court System, Names of potential jurors are selected from a variety of sources. When a trial requires a juror, names from the list are randomly selected in a way that is equivalent to writing the names on slips of papers, mixing them in a bowl, and selected the required number of potential jurors. Is this a simple random sample? Yes. Okay, usually you need, what, 12 people on the jury? Okay. So, you know, since we're kind of, everybody has an equal chance, you know, pulling them out of the bowl, we've got an equal chance of uh, every group of size 12 being selected. So we would say yes for that one. Okay, any questions about that? Yes. 